Okay, everyone, let's get this webinar started here. We're recording this today so that you can watch it later on. And uh, a couple of um, caveats up front, I guess, is that I am using a test Paragon. It's not a live site. It's not getting real listings. It's just a snapshot. And it's not completely set up yet. So you may see things in this recorded webinar that you don't see in your true real Paragon that you're looking at uh, getting ready to go live you know, on that September 15th date. So here we are talking about inputting listings. So let's do that first. We're going to start up here by coming to the main menu of listings. We click on it. And there's a column that says add a listing and a listing per class all the way down. And while we're here on the right side, the column is listings as far as maintain. There's also maintain a partial listing, which we'll talk about more here in a little bit. And while we're also here, let's kind of describe what this missing geocode search does. One of several ways that you can geocode or map your listing. Missing geocode search just means that I can do a search for my listings, whether I'm an agent, I can find my listings that need to be mapped or geocoded. If you're an office manager or an admin, you can do this for all the uh, listings in the brokerage. All right, so let's come over here now and get back to inputting a new listing. I'm going to click on residential. We'll just do that one. They all act and work the same. It's just the data that you're using for that particular class, of course. So. In our toolbox here, right across this little box, kind of a toolbar actually, we have save button where we have save a listing or save as a partial. And again, I'll talk more about what that means as far as a partial. But save a listing means that you have fully filled in all the blanks of all the fields that you have for your uh, listing and you got all the record field uh, required fields, excuse me, done, then you can save it and it becomes a true listing. It's got an MLS number and it can be searched by others and the auto searches can use and find it too. The save a partial means that while you're inputting a listing, if for some reason you get sidetracked and you have to leave what you're doing, as long as you have a few fields filled in that are needed for partial saving, which I'll show you here in a minute, then you can you know, save it as whatever you've got done up till then and walk away from it. You can even continue to input it if you want just to save it along the way as a partial. You can do that too. Or if you like, have to leave the building and you need to save what you've got done, whether you have all the required fields satisfied with data or not it doesn't matter just as long as the p partial fields are required and there's only a few of those so we'll come back to that a little bit more as we get into the main screen here reset fields of course means just that clear everything out and start anew r as you can imagine when the red box as you see below two here also we mean means required only so those fields if you click this you'll only see the required fields Open and close. Before I click open, I'm going to scroll down a little bit and you can see that there are additional containers of fields. And what this open all means is that you click on it and all of the containers are open. However, you don't have to do that. As you fill in these fields and you come down the screen, you get to, in this case, this directions box and you're done. You click tab and it will automatically go to the property details box and container and open it up and you just keep moving right on down, down the line. But for me, I almost always, first thing I do is click on open all and then all of the containers are open and I just work through that way. You know, either way works. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever your preference is. The close all, of course, closes all of those containers. Let's come back to open all. Now let's get down into the fields themselves. Don't worry about these numbers over here on the left. They really don't mean anything for you. You're just concentrating on this middle section, starting with MLS number, which of course is a required field, but we don't have a number yet. We'll get that when we save it. And we started off in a residential class. Ours, like I mentioned earlier, are required fields. The P that I also kind of talked about means have these satisfied in order to do that partial save. So the idea is 
you're working down the screen, you're putting in your fields, and you get halfway down, you still have a lot of fields and a lot of you know information to put in, including other required fields that you haven't gotten to yet. It means that you can do the partial save that I mentioned earlier, and it'll give you just a little detail of the partial ID number, MLS number. It's not a true MLS. It can't be seen on the system yet. It's only waiting for you to come back and finish it. Then and you need to use it that number to come back and maintain that partial later, then you can. That's what this maintain partials mean as I come back up here into the main menu. All right, back down into the main part of our screen here. There are fields that are lookup fields that act exactly the way they look up fields work on a search. Like for instance, status. Status is a lookup field. You can tell because of the magnifying glass over here. You can click on it and you'll have your list of statuses. Now they might look a little bit different now that we're set up as far as how they appear in this little box, but that's okay. If not, it doesn't matter. You can just select the one. In this case, it's a new listing, so it's going to be active and or an off. It's exclusive. You guys understand that. I just want to show you how this works. We'll go with active and we'll say save. And so active is now in the box. However, because it is a lookup field, as I back that active out of there, I could have just started to type ACT and have gotten active. Now these others are coming into play here just because they're part of the active category. We're going to stay just with active. We click on it or hit tab or enter and it's in. Listing date, expiration date, those are probably um, be set up for you automatically uh, on the date. The listing date will probably be set for today's date when or the date that you're actually putting in the listing, I should say. Listing price, that's a given. Property type, property subtype. These are also lookup fields. In this case, this magnifying glass. Again, there's just the three different types. Pretty simple there. And you would have just started typing it in. So if I type in uh, S-I-N-G and single, you'll see the detached and the attached. The one that's highlighted in blue is the one that you can tab on, and that will be the one it'll take. And so now we have detached single family. Property subtype is also a lookup field. It can be in a list, though. It's a required field. And I'm not going to sit here and go through uh, and filling out all of these fields and put in a listing. That's not our, pl our plan here. Our plan is to show you how to use these boxes and for you to put in the data when you're ready. So there's parish, it's a lookup field. Area, as I mentioned earlier, if you choose a certain parish, then only the areas that will be in that parish will appear. But it's a lookup field and it'll be easy to start. Begin typing the data that you want. Type in number. Well, let's type in another number here. All right, now I'm getting all the numbers, of course, because I haven't chose a parish here yet. That comes first, then the areas that come become part of that parish are that are part of that parish then become available to you here. And address is the next one. This is street number. Here's our directional. And not set up yet, but by the time you're probably watching this as a a recorded webinar and for those of you that are watching it now this will become a lookup field also so you'll have a magnifying glass um, or the drop down but probably a magnifying glass where you'll just start typing in the letters of the street that it is whether it's numbers or or um, alpha lettering it doesn't matter it'll just start to give you the choices that match the letters that you're typing a lookup field for an address makes it so much better to search by addresses later because you know it's spelled correctly. Uh, the street and drive and avenue and whatever it might be, circle, those are all in correctly and spelled the right way or the right abbreviations. And so that will be a great benefit for when you go live and you'll have this lookup field. Unit number and then city. In city limits, yes or no? As we scroll on down, there's a zip code and a validate map. Now, validate map means that based on the address that you've placed in here, right along where I'm highlighting in blue, you put that address in, 
you click validate map it will take that address and it will tell you if it can find that listing on a map and if it doesn't for some reason it will allow you then to say or place and click and put your listing in the right place and save it and now you've mapped it so either way it's easy to do and you can just go ahead and map it or at least check it on the fly even before you've saved it so I'm gonna put in just to show you what it looks like just the zip code and of course that's not a full address so it's not gonna find it and map it but I'll click validate map just so you guys can get to see what it looks like and so it's placing the little pinpoint here in the middle of the map and probably just in the middle of the zip code because that's all I gave it state and zip up here in the top left you can see the listing address and of course all we have state and zip your whole address will appear and if the pin is in the exact right place where it needs to be with a high quality and the geocode quality is right over here to our left 0.85 is pretty high on a 0.1 to 0.95 scale but 0.85 is still not good enough. That means it can only find it via the zip code that I just placed in it a minute ago. However, if it's at a 0.9 or a 0.95, the very top levels of geocode quality, you'll find that your listing is really close or exactly where it needs to be on the map. If, though, it didn't find it and it's a 0.85 or lower down to the 0.1, which is the absolute lowest of quality of finding, then what we need to do is move the map or even zoom out possibly and move the map wherever we think we need to and say to the map, right over here is where my listing belongs. I'm just going to kind of pretend here with this, everybody. So let's say I can zoom in a little bit more. And let's say, okay, it should be right here. I can do a couple of things. I can drag and put the pin right there, drag and drop it there, or just come up here to the locator pin and click on it, come to where I know my listing belongs, and then click on the map. And now you can see it brings the push pin in. It changes the geo quality to 1.0, which means that the agent, you, or the you know, office admin who's putting in this listing has manually placed that pinpoint where it belongs and you save your map your choices your changes and you're done but like I said most of the time the system the mapping tools out there uh, the third-party mapping tools will find your listing and place it in the right place this is just a way to check it that's the same kind of way to geocode your listing or map your listing the same thing as if I did a missing geocode search and it would brings me the exact same tool